Maccabim shall she three Maccabees three. On discovering this, so incensed was the wicked king that he long he no longer confined his rage to the Yahdim in Alexandria, laying his hand more heavily upon those who lived in the country. He gave orders that they should be quickly collected into one place and most cruelly deprived of their lives. While this was going on, an invidious rumor was uttered abroad by men who had banded together to injure, rather to injure the Yahudic race. The purport of their charge was that the Yahudim kept them away from the ordinances of the Torah. Now, while the Yahudim always maintained a feeling of unswerving loyalty towards the kings, yet as they worshipped Elohim and observed his Torah, they made certain distinctions and avoided certain things. Hence, some persons held them in odium, although as they adorned their conversations with works of righteousness, they had established themselves in the good opinion of the world. What all the rest of mankind said was, however, made of no account by the foreigners, who said much of the exclusiveness of the Yahudim with regard to their worship and meats. They alleged that they were men unsociable, hostile to the king's interests, refusing to associate with him or his troops. By this way of speaking, they brought much odium upon them. Nor was this unexpected uproar and sudden conflux of people unobserved by the Yavanim who lived in the city, concerning men who had never harmed them, yet to aid them was not in their power, since all was oppressed around, but they encouraged them in their troubles and expected a favorable turn of affairs. He who knows all things will not, said they, disregard so great a people. Some of the neighbors, friends and fellow dealers of the Yahudim, even called them secretly to an interview, pledged them their assistance, and promised to do their very utmost for them. Now, the king, elated with his prosperous fortune, and not regarding the superior power of Elohim, rather of Elohim, but thinking to preserve in his present purpose, wrote the following sefer to the prejudice, rather to the prejudice of the Yahudim, rather of the Yahudim. King Ptolemy Philopater, to the commanders and soldiers in Mitzrayim, and in all places health and happiness, I am right well, and so too are my affairs. Since our Asiatic campaign, the particulars of which ye know, and which by the aid of the Elohim, not lightly given, and by our own vigor, has been brought to a successful issue according to our expectation, we resolved, not with strength of spear, but with gentleness and compassion, as it were to nurse the inhabitants of Coeli, Aram, and Phoenicia, and to be their willing benefactors. So, having bestowed considerable sums of money upon the temples of the several cities, we proceeded even as far as Yerushalayim, and went up to honor the temple of these wretched beings who never cease from their folly. To outward appearance they received us willingly, but belied that appearance by their deeds, when we were eager to enter their temple and to honor it with the most beautiful and exquisite gifts. They were so carried away by their old arrogance as to forbid us the entrance, while we, out of our forbearance toward all men, refrained from exercising our power upon them, and thus exhibiting their enmity against us, they alone among the nations lift up their heads against kings and benefactors, as men unwilling to submit to anything reasonable. We then, having endeavored to make allowance for the madness of these persons, and on our victor rather victorious return treating all people in Mitzrayim courteously, 
acted in a manner which was befitting accordingly, bearing no ill will against their kinsmen at Yerushalayim, but rather remembering our connection with them, and the numerous matters with sincere heart from a remote period entrusted to them. We wished to venture a total alteration of their state by bestowing upon them the rights of citizens of Alexandria and to admit them to the everlasting rights of our salami, sol, rather, solemnities. All this, however, they have taken in a very different ruach. With their innate malignity, they have spurned the fair offer and, constantly inclining to evil, have rejected the inestimable, rather, inestimable rights, not only so, but by using speech and by refraining from speech. They abhor the few among them who are heartily disposed towards us, ever deeming that their ignoble course of procedure will force us to do away with our reform. Having then received certain proofs that these Yahudim bear us every sort of ill will, we must look forward to the possibility of some sudden tumult among ourselves when these impious men may turn traitors and barbarous enemies. As soon, therefore, as the contents of this sefer become known to you, in that same hour we order those Yahudim who dwell among you, with women and children, to be sent to us, vilified and abused, in chains of iron, to undergo a death, cruel and ignominious, suitable to men disaffected. For by the punishment of them in one body, we perceive that we have found the only means of establishing our affairs for the future on a firm and satisfactory basis. Whosoever shall rather shield a Yahudi, whether it be old man, child, or suckling, shall with his whole house be tortured to death. Whosoever shall inform against the Yahudim, besides receiving the property of the person charged, shall be presented with two thousand drachme from the royal treasury, shall be made free, and shall be crowned. Whatever place shall enter a Yahudi shall, when he is hunted forth, be put under the ban of fire and be forever renderless useless, rather, rendered useless to every living being for all time to come. Such was the purport of the king's sefer.